Alrighty, folks, we are at Pacific Harbor, and uh, what I will say about this one is it is our first round using the Bluetooth Direct from Garmin to PC connection. I just have a little Bluetooth USB plugged in uh, to the computer, and it is picking up the Garmin. I've done it for a few rounds now as I'm editing this, and I will tell you that I've had a little... I've had a couple times where the Bluetooth says it's connected to the computer, but the software says it's disconnected, and I had to restart everything, and it was during a live stream, and it was kind of embarrassing. I should have had the other one on there uh, for the time being. Other than that, it's worked really good, and it works really good in this round as well. I didn't have as many issues. Um, it could have been Bluetooth interference or something like that, uh, but it seemed like something disconnected and left me kind of hanging. What I noticed immediately as I hit that ball was how quickly it registered. It's like less than a second, I think, I was counting, where... On average, it's almost a second and a half, a second and three quarters when you go through the phone. So really uh, quite remarkable that it's almost twice as fast just going through one less device when Bluetooth is so fast anyway. But um, either way, a bogey on one here at Pacific Harbor. And there's another example of just like right as I finish swinging, it is off and going, which is cool. I think it makes for a better visual experience as well. Need a big hop. Yes. We'll take it there. Birdie on two. You can see Pacific Harbor's got some really awesome details. Water rendering and reflection looks great. The kind of layout of these holes looks really good. The infinite trees in the background, also something I'm a fan of. Not a fan of that drive though, it is left. So one thing with the Bluetooth I will say as I lay up here is I'm trying to figure out how to get that swing data into my recording. And this is kind of the um, only way I've been able to do it is by showing this uh, advanced API from GS Pro. And I haven't really found a good way to transfer that either. And so it's all kind of a work in progress right now. But um, if you have any suggestions, then let me know. Um, my setup is a little unique, so... It's possible that I can't do what some other people do, but I can certainly try, and I definitely have enough cables to do it. Uh, my wife makes fun of me because I have a whole closet full of random different types of cables, different connectors, extenders, converters, etc., and she thinks that they're useless until I pull one out and say, yeah, I can connect those. All right, we're even through four. The fifth hole is a dogleg right par four. It's gonna be a little ways in here. 160. Kind of an open face there and short. Gotta hit through it. A little 16 yard chip. I was gonna say it looked a little short on the swing there. And just as I get done talking about being even, we go to plus one, change that score immediately. All right, what is going on with the driver? That was kind of the best flight of the ball. Not really what I wanted. Second shot, also bad. Looks kind of like I'm lifting. Um, at the wrong time there's like a chest lift and an arm lift it's happening really late in the backswing I'm gonna have to take a look at that some more after this commentary we're still at plus one though white tees if you hadn't noticed 
and 140 yard par three. And that's just a nice shot right in there. Not dead on for a birdie, but close to the hole and an easy two putt par. Eighth hole coming up, 320 yards. Pretty good drive. It might even get a kick. No, it's going to hang up in the rough. 97 remaining. From the rough, 97 yards. Just a little flick. Needs a bounce. Needs to stop. No. That would be the downfall of flighting it a little lower with no spin is you don't get that check that you're looking for if you get the distance dead on. Uh, a terrible drive. I'm staring at the club there on the left like it's going to break up with me if I keep treating it this way. That shot I might have not been able to do ever. Oh, it almost went in. From the bunker 170. Right at the pin. 2600 spin. That was a cool shot. Tenth hole. We're down the back nine already. It is plus one headed that way. Best drive of the day there on 10 as well. Get like some actual distance off the tee and sitting there ready to go 95 remaining check five five zero a real par five here will any drive be good today it looks like everything is high on the face like I'm swinging right under it. Now I can see that on camera, which is weird that I'm not equating these numbers to that reality. I think that's just an iron layup. A little big fade right there into the fairway 157. Yeah, it looks that looks weird the lift that I'm doing. Executed okay. They are on 11 for another par. 12th hole upcoming. What we can take away from this Pacific Harbor course is that it's done very well and that the Bluetooth Direct to PC is quite a bit faster just in the initial latency from contact to. I mean, that one, how did it even read it? Look like it didn't even hit the net yet. Oh, that's a shame. Comes up just a couple of inches short. 13th is going to bring us a par 3, 126 yards. Looks like one you can kind of take on. Just a tough little bunker in front of the pin. It is tracking. It goes just a little long and catches the fringe. I have been working on the putting for GS Pro. I have rearranged my garage now in real time to have the putter station basically set up with the webcam. Trying to get that interface to work. I got it to kind of work and then every putt I hit was like 25 miles per hour. And it just flew across the green so I wasn't quite sure what I was doing wrong but it's still gonna happen and the video when you see this video my video will be much closer we hang up on the bank which is just a blessing and then get an actual chance to chip at this and it stays in for a birdie so from the bank chipping across the creek landing it in the rough rolling it on the green Next to the hole, a one putt birdie. And we're off to the 15th hole, even now. 
I'm not sure that's where you want to be off the T, but it looks like I have a little window. This ball trying to get there. It takes a good fringe boost. And is it going to hang up? Maybe not. It goes from the automatic to putt par. Just nestles right outside the automatic three putt bogey. Plus one going to the 16th, 341 yards. Riding the waves here, right up the edge of the lake, never faded an inch. And blocking ourselves out from the second shot, but taking on the trees anyway. And it comes up short again, 41 away. Really want to stick this one close, but it comes up short as well. And the 16th becoming a mini disaster at Pacific Harbor. A good chip there, though, up the hill. That could have been one that landed right back at your feet. Just a bogey on the card. Plus two to the 17th, a long par three, 198. This club used to be like old reliable, <laughs> and now it's kind of sporadic, unless I'm trying to hit it like 190. But like my 200, 205 shot with that thing has been a little tough. Please stay. It's catching, it's picking up steam. Oh, it stops. Another bogey on the card, plus three now going to the 18th hole. Pacific Harbor will wrap up here as we hit play the last one. The details are great, the water's great, the layout's great, the playability I think is great. If we're gonna rank all this stuff, you know, it's it's 8.5s on everything. And uh, it's a course, especially now watching it back, that I think everyone should at least go try. A tough shot there. Is it going to make the par circle? Of course not. Another bogey on the card. So four bogeys to end. That's never what you want to see. Let's take a look at the stats. Those are the white tees, Saturday pins, Pacific Harbor. The statistics are going to show us 61% of greens, but only 21% of fairways and some very short drives and a lot of putts today, people. So... Check back tomorrow, another course coming at you, and we will see you then. Peace.